your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. A $90,000 donation in the form of personal protective equipment was given to ISRA Aid, a nonprofit organization that has been on the ground assisting Grand Bahamians with recovery efforts since the passage of Hurricane Dorian in 2019. Logistics manager Sasha Pinder says they've decided to pay it forward. They donated it to us, and we decided to donate it to the healthcare system and the school system as well. So um, we split the N95 mask and the medical mask between all of the government schools from east to west and the public hospitals authority, including all of the clinics from east to west. We're going back to face to face on Monday of next week. And I think it's a perfect time uh, for this opportunity to be able to provide disposable masks for students so that they can switch out and they have a number of um, masks so that their parents don't have to keep buying a mask over and over. And it does ease um, the strain of looking for masks. So. Well, pastor of the Church of God of Prophecy in Pinedale, Eight Mile Rock, Keith Palmer, has received donations from Israel Aid in the past, and he says that the organization has been a tremendous help to the local church and community. After school program, music development program, uh, other areas of concern, uh, they have been there with us. Feeding. Uh, during our programs, we have seen them come on board, and not only with their monetary but we have uh, Valerie and Demetrius and their staff coming and physically working with us during these times. And so, yes, they have been making a tremendous impact in, in the community. One of the things that we are further challenged by, we are trying to develop a spirit of volunteerism so that persons within the community can see the impact that Israel Aid is having on the community and we have more persons come forward to volunteer their gift and their talent to the community for the development of the community. Matriarch Dalcina Russell Smith receiving a special message from the Governor General of the Bahamas in honor of her 100th birthday. The Eight Mile Walk Centenarian was greeted by a small team at her home. Cecil Thompson reading to her the message from the Governor General, His Excellency Cornelius A. Smith and his wife Clara. The Governor General extending congratulations and best wishes for her 100th birthday. For this significant milestone and for your exemplary life of unselfish service mm -hmm. to your family and to the community and to community development, yeah. you have made us all proud. Thank you. It gives me great pleasure, therefore, to extend the profound gratitude of a proud nation for your invaluable contributions Thank you. to the national development of our country over these many years. Thank you. I pray that with the grace of Almighty God, you will be blessed to enjoy many more birthdays mm -hmm. in the best of health and happiness. Now, Matriarch Smith thanking the Governor General for this gesture. The Governor General of the Bahamas, tell him I salute him, and I am one of the people who helped to bring up his people here in the Bahamas. I groom them, teach them not to curse, use bad language, and don't like that. How to respect people. And keep smiling. If you smile, somebody can smile back. And that one smile in me too. Well, a Grand Bahamian creative is preparing for a major launch this coming weekend. Writer, director, and producer Carol Pinder will unveil a true Bahamian story, Easy Love, a miniseries that was produced by Island Dreams Production Company.
It follows a young Bahamian girl as she goes to university abroad, and we watch the crazy escapades and naive decisions as she makes, as she pursues her degree, she wants to become a dentist, but also on her quest for love. So it's definitely a story that a lot of Bahamians can relate to. It's sort of a period piece. It's set back in early 2000s. So if you grew up in the 90s or the early 2000s, you will relate to a lot of the things you'll see in Easy Love as well. Dr. Jillian Storr, who is a dentist today, she came to me and she was telling me that she was writing a book about her love story, her husband and her love story. And I told her that, you know, I can help her produce the book and we can get the book out there. And she said, you know, I'd really love for it to one day be a Netflix movie. And I said, why not now? Now, Easy Love has an all Bahamian cast and was produced in about five months. Pinder will host a premiere event on Saturday, February 19th at the Pelican Bay Resort at 7.30 p.m. We're gonna show the episodes of the series. We're also gonna show a documentary that I shot two years ago, and the documentary features Bahamian creatives. And so the reason I wanted to show this is because in the documentary, Bahamian's creatives get really honest about what it's like trying to be a full-time creative in the Bahamas, and the highs and the lows of pursuing a career in the creative industry and it not always being profitable and it sometimes being discouraged in our community. And so I wanna show that first because we made that two years ago as a company and now show that this is what happens when you come together and you continue to pursue your dreams and then they'll watch Easy Love. They'll also get the book, Easy Love. There's also gonna be a VIP treat box. So we're just like piling in everything that so they could have a real lasting experience and then we'll have a panel with the cast and crew so that the audience members can ask all of the questions that they want. Well, Easy Love will also premiere in New Providence at Fusion Superplex on Saturday, February 26. And this is the week of love, and tonight we will feature a young couple who says they take their sacred vows seriously. For them, they say God is always at the center of their relationship, and they are encouraging others to do the same. Here's Jamila Music. To love and to cherish. Navarre is a recruitment officer at the University of the Bahamas, and Marcia is a human resources officer at the Grand Bahama Port Authority. The Smiths will celebrate five years of marriage in October. Navarre says he believes it was divine intervention and connection that brought them together because when he saw Marcia for the first time at church, he knew she was someone he had to get to know. Left the church, didn't do anything about it, but as fate would have it, we ended up connecting on social media and I said, okay, when I saw her come across, I'm like, okay, this is the same lady I've been meaning to talk to. So through that, I sent her a Facebook message and we ended up going on a couple dates just through con conversing on Facebook. And those dates led to marriage and almost five years later, later two kids. Marcia says despite their first date not going as planned, she knew Navarre was someone special as well. So he was invited to the police um, Christmas party. So we thought this was the formal Christmas party that we were attending. We were both dressed up. Um, but turns out it was the children's um, Christmas party. And so I could see Navarre was, you know, embarrassed at the time. He was like, we take, I take, I take out on a first date to, to the children's Christmas party, Santa, they're handing out um, gifts to the kids. Um, but he was able to quickly think on his feet and he was like, you know what, let's go to dinner. And we ended up going to Sabah that night. And he showed me in that moment like he was someone who could think quick on his feet and turn a situation around and I was like okay there's, there's some some traits that I would want in my future spouse. The two say they always keep God first and at the center of their relationship and they have a shared vision for their lives and their family. I really try to be intentional with treating her in the way that I want to be treated and everything and be consistent with that because like when we hear it, it sounds like a cliche, but sometimes we think about treating everybody in that way, except our spouse, for those who are married. And then when it comes to your spouse, you're just like, oh yeah, whatever. But I didn't want to take on that type of attitude with my wife. And so when it comes to the unconditional love, the respect, the patience, the grace, the respect, etc., that I want, I really daily 
try to bring that to the table. They admit that it is not always easy, but despite the difficult times, their marriage is a partnership and they will continue to love and to cherish one another. Even to this day when we have challenges and disagreements, we would say, you know, let's remember our vows. Like, this isn't a, a, a joke. We said we would be committed to our marriage for richer, for poor, better, for worse. Um, sickness and hell until death to aspire. So we, we hold one another accountable and we encourage. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we slow it down a bit and try to talk and be transparent. Mm -hmm. And so it's been, it's gone a long way because you're right. I'm making those adjustments in the beginning, it, it, it's, it's brutal at times. Mm -hmm. You have two different personalities trying to mash everything. And, and the good thing about it is both of us come from homes where we've seen marriages. Both of our parents have been married for over 30 years. My parents are approaching 40 years this month. And my grandparents um, have been married for over 70 years. Seeing those examples firsthand and, and the commitment and the level of commitment through good times and bad, because we've seen, I'm sure Navar have see, has seen um, in his parents' marriage and in my parents' marriage, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly side of it. And, you know, but we have decided that we made a commitment and we're gonna stick to it. My extremely beautiful, amazing wife, <laughs> always by my side, being supportive. I mean, I can never thank you enough, and I'll show you my appreciation, but believe me, it goes a long way, and I know from this point on, it's only up. And you have proven to be an awesome husband, even in the bad times, and the hard times, and so I love you, and I appreciate you, and I thank God for you daily. I love you too. <laughs> Jamila Mizek, ZNS Network News. Way to go, Jamila, another beautiful love story. That's a look at stories making news. Jay Philippe is standing by with your Thursday evening sports report. Good evening, I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to Sports. One of the very elite tennis tournaments took place right here in Grand Bahama. Let's start with that. The 2022 Bahamas Pure Water and Ice National Junior Tennis Tournament officially now in the books. The three-day tournament took place at the YMCA Tennis Courts with some of the top juniors and senior athletes from Grand Bahama and New Providence in attendance. As far as results from the competition, Winning the girls 12 and under was Kayla Fox. The winner in the boys 12U and 14U was Patrick McTaggart. In the girls 14U, the winner was Brianne Ferguson. Capturing the girls 16 and under crown was Jaleesa Clark. Over in the boys 16U and 18U, the winner was Kai Reese. So far, I thought I've been playing pretty good. Uh, I won all my matches. I only dropped one game so far, so it's been pretty good. I've been having practice almost every day. Uh, been working out. <clears throat> trying to do small stuff at home, you know, like fitness stuff, and yeah. The girls' 18U was won by Safari Ferguson. I'm playing pretty good, to be honest. My expectation is to win. From the tennis courts to the soccer field, Coach Mary Knowles and Donnie Knowles recently attended the UEFA certification course over in Scotland. For Coach Mary, she's hoping to take soccer to the next level on Grand Bahama. It's amazing um, how much you think you know and then when you go to something, how much you don't know. So it was, I've always, you know, all of us, all of the coaches in our program have always, you know, been thirsty for knowledge, but um, we're hoping to use um, our knowledge with the coaches here. And we already have, um, you know, when we had, to, we had to do practice sessions and uh, they would come and they would watch. And when we were in Scotland, we were the only two volunteer coaches. Most of them were, most of our peers were university coaches and people who do academies full time. So, like I said, it was uh, very intimidating, but well worth it and uh, really enjoyed the experience. Also in softball at the college level, Grand Bohemian Altavia Hall is in her senior year at Central Christian College in Kansas. So far, her team is 2-2 two and two early on in the season. On the year, the infield has three hits. One was a home run. She also had one RBI and scored one run. 
And that's a quick check on sports, ladies and gents. I'm Jay Philippe. Be blessed.